Well, welcome back. It's Ratso. Hey, guys. How's it going? Well, it's good to see you, Ratso. How you been? Uh, <laughs> doing pretty good. I enjoyed the noise yesterday. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty crazy. Can you imagine how many fireworks went off yesterday on the 4th of July? I had no clue. Well, so remember tonight I told you we're going to talk real quickly to the guys, gals that are joining me live about the Roadcaster Pro 2. Isn't that cool? What? A Roadcaster Pro version 2. A road what? A Roadcaster Pro version 2. It's a new device that I have right there. That? Yeah, that right there is a Roadcaster Pro version 2. 2. Yeah, so that means there was a 1, now there's a 2. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so, now, one of the cool features is I can reach up right here and I can change your voice. Say what? That totally changed your voice. That was kind of scary. I think that's cool. Let's do it again. Okay, let's push. I'm going to kill you. That's scary. I'll turn it off before I scare the rat. Oh, what? Um, never mind. So anyway, these guys are joining us tonight for the post show. It's good to have you as a co-host. Do you have anything to say? Like it's um, intelligent? Uh, yeah. I think you're... Don't say it. Cute. <laughs> what? So embarrassing. You've embarrassed me in front of people live. It's not even right. Uh, well, you're handsome. <laughs> Would you quit? Nice shirt. <laughs> hey, Joe. Oh, hey, Rat. So, did you just shout out to Joe from Conjoling Technology? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, anyway, so. Anything else you want to say? Yeah. It is a great night. Good night. What? Ratso is gone? You gotta be kidding me. That wasn't very long. Man, Ratso and these short little cameos, it just, it leaves even me wanting more because tonight, actually, he was kind of funny. I enjoyed that. Never know what voice is gonna show up for Ratso. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a number of puppets and it always seems that you kind of gravitate towards one voice, and being's mostly Ratso on the show, I guess it doesn't matter, but... I thought this voice was pretty cool. So, make sure I don't have that on still. Check, check. Okay, so, anyway, we are not streaming at ridiculously high again. I um, did not hit record, so I am going to hit record now. So, I am recording the program out. Welcome to the post show. My name is Keith. This is Life Journey Production Studios, and if you're joining me for the very first time, thank you. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, and I do have subscriber only turned on tonight, so if you subscribe five minutes later, you can then chat with us. I hope you will. I'm going to turn the chat on here in a second, but you can subscribe right there. I would really, really appreciate it. I have some notes because I want to talk tonight in the post show about... Um, Something I think is very dear to my heart, and the reason I'm going to say this is dear to my heart, and I will acknowledge you here in just a second, is um, because I really believe being creative, the ability to create, right, is super important. Um, if it's building a house or if it's setting up a studio or if it's communicating, every conversation, every moment in our life, even a live stream, even with tools like the creativity that I have, the ability to create with Ratso. I can create a night, can create a moment. And um, I remember those moments with, with ventriloquist and ventriloquist puppets when I was younger. I remember cartoons. I remember Spider-Man. I remember Batman. I remember the Munsters. I remember Speed Racer. I remember all of these creative things that were on TV by creative people that I could watch and I could consume. I have my shout out to Batman back here, Bigfoot. I mean, right now I'm watching the series alone. So creativity in the world that we live in is super important. And one of the things I think that happened in the 2019, 2020 is a lot of creativity got put on hold. So when 
creativity gets put on hold or something happens in your life and you can't maybe work with wood like you used to. Maybe age is setting in and you can't run or bike and all those things. I want to talk about the creative mindset and one of the things that I do, actually three things tonight, but one of the things we're going to key on tonight that I do to try to keep my creative brain going. So let me... Um, let me get my pen out here. Let's put chat on the screen. And um, let's do a shout out here to everybody that's already on. Obviously, Ratso steals the show in the beginning. Great to have you on here. Freddie, we have DJ Ware here, ready for Ratso. Quick Tech Solutions, which is Tony. Um, check out those guys' channel, DJ Ware and Quick Tech. Um, looks like Keith is in the house cooling the room off. Freddie, you need to install an air conditioner unit, Keith. Yeah, Shannon and I are talking about I have two portables I could put right back there, and I may be bringing one in before July and August is out and then running those in between shows and hiding it behind one of these chairs. The problem is I'm almost out of power, Freddie, um, because I have so many things plugged in here. I'm worried about an air conditioner and the kind of amps it pulls popping a breaker, so I may have to run an extension cord um, out through the window into our porch outlet and find out if that's an isolated outlet. Good to have you here, Joe. And um, Ratso was using some of your, uh, your your comments in the past as part of his his comments tonight to me. So uh, I don't. Are you in? Are you and Ratso related? No, you can't be. He's a yeah. He's just okay. I'm confused. Thank you so much um, for that super chat and um, I appreciate it. I will I will put that in the Ratso bank. Um, Tony says, come on, put together a show. Joe and I will produce it for you. <laughs> yeah, I am going to do, just so you know, I am gonna do a, um, a show. Um, I think I'm planning it right now for September. Um, I may have a family event happening. We're trying to figure out what that is, but I have penciled in some ideas for the channel. And um, I do want to wait until it gets a little cooler in here. June, July, and August are very hot months. And I barely could get, I was a little bit late tonight because I could barely get my hand inside Ratso because uh, it's really hot and um, my arm gets sticky and it makes it harder to operate him. Um, so I would appreciate to have you guys co-produce. And um, you guys can do all the button pushing for that show. We'll figure out how to do that. Um, thank you. Ratso appreciates it. And um, I'll just have to put Ratso money in a Ratso bank So for Ratso. So um, I think he likes espresso cold on ice. So FYI. Short cameos tease a lot. Thank you. Laugh out loud. That's from Tony. Love Speed Racer and... Uh, all of those shows. I don't even know what gig a nader was, so I apologize for that. Conjoling uh, TV in black and white when you were a kid. Yeah, in the early days, black and white, and then color as I got older. I think right around seven or eight or nine is when color TV came out. I was born in 1961. I turned 61 on June 25th. So, um, Ratso and I are related, similar name. I'm well, I'm not saying that on the air. So anyway, good to have here, David. I do want to chat a little bit about my creative brain and how it's influenced by photography. And we're going to touch base on that as soon as I catch up in the chat. Hank, back in. Well, Ratso was here, Hank, at the very beginning, if you didn't see Ratso. So you can go back and hit replay and see my real little routine. I actually built in a little shout out to Joe from Conjoin Technologies in my routine. And um, you'd have to be here in some of the older lives to know exactly um, what that is. So we'll end this little chat. Look at um, right now with uh, Freddie's uh, laughing because I do enjoy laughter. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. So let's dive right in. Creative mindset. I want to um, make a little switch here. Let's go into, uh, let's see, super source, ready to roll here tonight. Yep, let me change what's in box number two. Man, it's becoming faster. If I just go in here to item two, and I want to change this to 
media player too. So I'm gonna drop a couple stills in here. Um, and I think I can do that right now. Let's drop this one in. And change the background here. I don't know why. Oh, I can't put it there. I have to put it up here. So let me switch this to media player one. Sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by. I will get my act together here. So now that I have that done, let's turn off this. Turn the chat off the air. And let me roll over in here now to Super Source. And we'll drop this in up here. Sorry, this is taking me so long, guys. But okay, in the still in this tonight, you can see some pictures here. So one of the keys, in my opinion, of creativity, right? Obviously, there's all different styles of creativity. You might be a painter. You might be a communicator. You might be a, a bicyclist. You might be a football player. You might be into sports. And so you might write plays or poems. You might write books or novels, fictions, or you might produce documentaries. You might do IT work like Tony and some of you here do on the channel. You might like to create woodwork with your hands. You might be a drummer. You might be a, a, a guitar player. I've actually had a client that was one of, uh, one of the premier United States ukulele players, and he's building a whole channel um, about his skill set and training people with ukuleles. So it's a, it's a privilege to be around creativity all the time. My wife is a midwife. And so in the pictures here, um, and let me bring, um, let's see, I want to bring up channel four here, five, six, seven, eight. I'll just bring this up. So that first picture on the top left is way back in about 2011, 12, 13. I built this studio and I was producing audio. So I got a chance to hang out with people who are very creative musically. So got to see people play um, Stand-up bass, I've seen people play drums, guitar, vocalists, great vocalists inside that studio there. I'm sitting in the control room. I've since then sold that house, that studio. But that creativity that would, took place in there was a, amazing for me. I could go to work all day long, come home, and there would be a producer in my studio. I'd set it up so there was a separate entrance into this part of my house, and um, I could come in and just listen to the recordings going on. I could sit there, put the headphones on. So being around creative people, right, being around that style of, um, of creativity, like music from everything from mixing, mastering it, recording it, was exciting for me. So what, what it did is, what my first point is tonight, it built great memories. And I believe one of the things that protects your creative mindset is creating memories. Now, to create a memory could be just like when my, when Dominic and I, let me switch cameras, when Dominic and I and my son created this Batmobile. Um, so we took all those pieces and we went into the garage and we built that, it's not pictured here, but that was a blast for me. Um, wish I had a picture I could grab real, qu real quick, but so that was a creative moment for me. So we created a memory and we talk about it every so often. In fact, now we're talking about the potential of building a um, bat bike version for my son, Christopher, um, who is very much a Batman 2022 fan. In fact, he's a Batman fan altogether. Then the next picture was a trip that I took. And so number two, not only do you need to build memories, but I think you got to pick and choose the people you build them with. You cannot just be creative by yourself, though you can. There's a lot of people that go out and paint by themselves. But if you can be creative with other people, like do things with people, um, and you can do woodworking with other people, you can do music, obviously, if you're in a band with people, or you can go to a studio and hang out with people. You can create things like that Batmobile display. You can see a picture on the bottom left of me building um, – uh, isolating the sound in my second studio that I built in that house. That one was upstairs. So I'm hanging hat channel right there. I did that with my son, Christopher. Um, so he and I spent some time. In the picture right above that is James. James was one of the, the lead singer in one of my son's bands. And he and I have 
great memories. And that's why I put that picture up because I haven't seen James in quite a while, but we had some creative moments there. So building great memories helps create that gr creative energy. It protects it. It makes you have good, fond memories. So people you work with at work, when you're actually able to do things like we had record months in selling RVs, and that was really cool to experience together. So that top middle photograph is a picture of my youngest son, Bryson. He's looking through um, this uh, metal display that was in the Seattle area. We went up there to go to the zoo and to see a family member I hadn't seen in a long time, um, my cousin, Guy Allen, and um, it was a blast. We got to stay overnight, got to meet his son for the very first time. And um, so he showed me all his really cool retro guitars. He's got a collection of very expensive electric guitars. And we took this picture. Bryson and I were on this trip. We took pictures in the zoo. We took pictures at Mount Noma Falls. Um, we had lunch there. We, we took pictures of the falls there. And we took this picture. And I just loved the look. He had that kind of Bryson look on his face. And we made a memory. And I also took a photograph. Shout out to David that's uh, on with us tonight. So shooting photography as well as um, hanging out with my son gave me the ability to be not only bonding with him, going out and visiting family and exploring those things, but I also got to get my camera out and do some photography. So I created with him, we've shared pictures together, and that's really exciting. So that's one thing. You can basically do things with other people, you could actually um, make sure that you are um, keeping that creative mindset by making memories, doing it with someone else, connecting. That helps keep you from losing your creativity. Now, on the top right, this was a music video that we produced. I got to co-produce this music video with that recording artist right there. The title of his song was Hooked on a Feeling, and um, it's a very good track we recorded it in my studio and uh, i had the privilege of working on that track as well as my camera was at this shoot uh, even though i was doing lights and things um, my good friend justin frick from justin frick take um, was producing this video and he was the i was the executive producer and i had a blast and i love this scene because literally i can see that location from the back of my porch before any of these houses were here, we shot a video right over on the other side, about 500 yards to 1,000 yards that direction. Um, and the sunset that's in that video is the sunset I see on my porch every single night I'm back there. So by doing this video, by hanging out with these people, by producing this video, it started to fuel my fashion for cinematography. Hanging out with Justin Frick only elevated my passion for photography and videography, sound and lighting, and then sets. This set, I had to find someone with a Mustang that weekend, and I had a friend that had a Mustang I built a relationship with, and I called him up and said, hey, we had a car and it fell through for a music video. Do you think you could hang out with us and we could use your Mustang? And guess what? Because of my relationship and my friendship with him, he actually handed us the keys to his Mustang and we borrowed it for a whole day to do a number of different shots with that Mustang. So what a great way to connect with people, to be creative and these memories and these people, when I run into them, it fuels me. So creating with people, number two, making sure that you are doing things, guys, making memories is so important because they pop up in your head when you experience something similar, like you get your camera out and you start thinking of all of these memories. And then I have studios here, right? There's a picture of my studio now in the first, the second section of photographs there. Next to that is a shot I took of the cable bridge right here in black and white with my camera. That's me at work on the right. And I'm actually back with some of the people I was working with in this photograph. In fact, rumor has it, I might be working with another person that was on the floor with me at this particular place. Now, I'm helping with creativity. I'm helping with culture. I'm helping with social media um, and eventually, hopefully, live streaming as well as 
um, po possibly podcasting. But to hang out with those people that I already made memories with is very exciting for me. Um, so that is another memory and another culture that I was able to be creative in. And then it was creating sales and helping customers find the perfect RV to meet, to fulfill their dream. And so it's why I was very passionate about that job because I loved camping as a kid. And um, we, had a, we had a pickup camper and I have great memories, both tent camping and being out in my mom and dad's camper. And so I ended up being in a RV sales career for over 18 years. And now I'm actually training some other salespeople when I get a chance. And it's exciting for me. Those memories back then still can help feed my creative mind today. In the middle row, obviously, James is there. That's my original Roland recorder that I had right here or actually in that original house. Next to that is the shot from the back of my studio. And next to that is an HDR shot that I did for a friend of mine who was starting a business um, for gaming inside that trailer. So he had the truck completely covered with stickers and the trailer. And inside that trailer was an air conditioner, giant screen TVs, a long padded couch, and kids could come in that trailer and play Xbox and PlayStation. And it was absolutely cool. He added outdoor games. He added laser tag and... He and I worked together in that same office in that picture, the second row on the right. So that relationship with him came together later with my photography creativity, and that picture was on his social media and on his website. And so the photography and our relationship, our RV history, kept my creative juices going because we made memories together and we were having coffee talking about his new business and I jumped in as one of the first clients I ever had with my production company and that picture represents one of the products that I was able to do for him. Then you saw the picture of me doing recording studio, isolating that room from my mastering room and then this puzzle piece picture. We'll let you know why I did that live stream tonight because um, you got to do what you can with what you have where you are. So one of the things I want to say tonight about being able to keep your creative mindset going is to take what's at your disposal. If it's your stuff that you have in your studio right now, live stream with it if you want to live. Go do photography with your phone. Do creativity with word working. Go for a ride. Spend some time with other people because those memories help fuel you. It's why families that have good memories together, families who play together, stay together because they bond even in the crisis and the good times, it creates some incredible bonding. So I have a couple more I wanna share tonight, but let's just stop here real quick. Um, let's go on the air with the chat here. Can I do that? Yes. And hearing an echo from my phone. I don't know what's going on with chat. Let's see, I have the PC on here. Oh, I know, I turned that off. Let me go back to the main camera here. And chat on the air. Um, So Freddie's asking a part two question. Did I miss your part? Okay, here's part one. You can flip back and forth between the HyperDeck high and stream high basis um, in recording streaming. So yeah, when I'm live, I can go to HyperDeck or go to streaming high. I can't change that why I'm actually live broadcasting. But what Tony is saying, I believe Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, is you can flip back between if you're gonna record a video in your studio and not stream it, you can switch to HyperDeck High and have a higher quality resolution video that you can edit in your software later. And then you can switch back to streaming high when you're getting ready to go live. And that is what I forgot to do tonight. I hope that answers your questions, Freddie. So Joe is asking me why I went back to those glasses because they're right here, and I haven't cleaned them to put them on. 
but I'll switch right now. So these glasses let me see better up high so I can actually see the screen better right now than I could before. I don't know why I didn't switch. I had lots of things to do, including Razzo. So, but thank you for pointing that out. I can see so much better. Um, and these glasses are a tiny bit different. So I hope you enjoy that. So David is a great photography photographer. Check out his channel. Um, David, when you do a video, especially when you show clips of some of the, the, um, this, the people that you hire, obviously, for your channel or when you go out to shoot photography, um, even some of your classes that you were teaching on your channel, I enjoyed that. In fact, David, I would love someday to be able to be in Australia and shoot with you. I'd love to go to Australia. It's on my bucket list. Someday, I'd love to go there. Someday, I'd love to go shooting with you. There's so many things I think that would be cool to shoot that I never got to shoot before that you would only see in Australia. So... Uh, in the land down under. Um, and so I could practice my uh, Australian accent and that would be really cool. Maybe create a new character um, that has an Australian accent. But so check out David's channel. So photography with my iPhone or photography with one of my cameras or back when I had a regular camcorder, a HMC 150 by Panasonic, that was awesome. Um, 720p camcorder with XLR inputs ND filters built in like you can find on the new Blackmagic Design Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Um, and those uh, ND filters are not available on the new G2. Um, so, but I uh, love that camera. I only got rid of it because everything was going to 1080p and why keep a 720p camera? So, um, hey, TVJ, it's always great to be here. And so, and then TVJ, he works in that broadcast industry. So did Hank. Some of the rest of you work in uh, other fields. And so there's lots of creativity going on behind the camera and in front of the camera. Think about those people that have to go live in the middle of those events or some of those athletes that you've been able to be there, um, Jay. That's incredible. And uh, Tony is saying, I got it right Switching back between Hyperdeck High and um, streaming high is what you do when you're not recording or you are going live. You just can't switch that when you are actually live. I did not know I could just end the stream, switch it over and start it again, and you guys would have just had a pause and then I'd be back, but I would have probably lost people if I tried that. So if you weren't in the live show, I was streaming at Hyperdeck High and um, back here in Multiview, I'll switch back. Literally, it was up to 32 megabytes, and I normally stream between 5.3 and 6.4 or so. So somehow, I was able to keep that stream going. Um, may have lost some frames. We'll have to watch it back later. And thank you. I would uh, I'd love to do that, David. One of these days, I want to have... Another thing on my agenda for September is to have a lot of you join me in a Zoom call. Um, I may do it live at the same time. I may just do a Zoom call where we can all have a conversation. And um, that would be a blast, David, to be able to do that with you and some of the other people that are on the channel live. And um, probably would open it up to anybody I'm familiar with and just have a conversation. That would be really, really cool. Uh, and um, we'll work on making that happen. And then Freddie says, thank you to uh, Tony at Quick Tech Solutions. We'll go chat off the air. So I have spent another stream talking about live streaming tech, right? This channel is really about live streaming tech. And I do think there's new people subscribing to my channel that are watching some of these videos that uh, Roadcaster Pro video had has already got over 2,000 um, people that have watched it. They don't watch all of it because it's over an hour and a half long, but people were very interested in the Rodecaster Pro version too, and that's just one of the tools. But obviously these things are just vehicles to be creative, right? To live stream, and there's tools that, that I have here and there's tools I have in my garage, right? There are tools that I'm gonna use as soon as I get off the air um, because I'm barbecuing burgers tonight. So I'll have a spatula, I'll have all those tools. I'm gonna be doing that with my wife and my son's here tonight, so we're gonna create some memories. And so cooking is a way to be creative. 
So your creative mind impacts, I believe, every part of your life, right? I mean, you're being creative when you whittle wood. You're being creative when you have a conversation. You're being creative when you deal with situations that work or problem solve. And I don't know if you realize this, but there's times when you get my age that you can't think of a, a word or you can't come up with an answer. And I'll look at my wife or one of my close friends and I go, what is that word? Almost the relationship seemed to lend me brain cells because I'll instantly remember it right after I say to them, what is that one thing called that TV show? And it'll come to me. I really believe that that's happened. That happens because there's creative t creativity and creative energy and ingenuity and even mind power going back and forth. So I'm not sure it's the force. I'm not sure if it's um, yin or yang. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I do know that we're not just physical humans. There's more to us. And I think that's why we like to share things like this. That's why, even though you know Ratso isn't real, right? You still love the humor and you love the character of that because of the creativity of ventriloquism. And it's not just that. There's things that we've seen come out recently in products that are creative as well. So let's finish these last couple pictures here um, up on the screen. So I have Ratso there. So I created that box. I literally took some pallets, took them apart, and I created that box. Now, it didn't survive the move. It was in a shed. I hadn't had Ratso out for a, out for a while. Something fell on it and broke it, but I love the idea of Ratso's box, and um, right now he lives with me full time. He doesn't have to travel the world anymore, but that box had stickers all over it from the different places that Ratso had been, and um, I love the story. I love the backstory. For me, um, that story is real. I, I'm just, I'm all in with it. It would be like playing a character um, in a TV series or playing a character in a movie, um, that creative ability to throw yourself all in. And so to really uh, put myself in Ratso's position and where he, where he came from and um, who his family is and where he's been really helps me be creative. And then the big picture that's on the bottom left-hand side just next to me, that's me finishing the flooring I'm getting ready to finish a couple things in the studio. We were painting the ceiling in that shot, and I'm getting exciting because the flooring's in. Uh, all the sheetrock has been replaced with hat channel, 5H sheetrock, two layers with green glue in between, and I'm, get, I'm getting ready to build my recording desk, and I was really excited. I always had dreamed of building something outside of high school out of wood, and I designed a desk and I built a whole desk inside that control room and um, sold it to a, a mom and dad who was buying it for their son um, because I didn't have room for it in this house. So I sold that um, after I built it and had it in the studio for a couple of years um, and um, pretty exciting. So this desk I purchased, but that desk I was using in the mastering room, I created with my own hands and I did it again with my older son, Christopher, a couple of the days we worked together, including on that studio. He helped me um, build my original recording studio. Bryson helped, Shannon helped. I had friends that helped me hang sheetrock. So many memories and so many things took place. So here's the last thing I wanted to share tonight um, that helps your creative mindset, right? It's something called affirmations or, um, emotional ideas and plans in your future that you can talk to yourself about and they have emotion in them. Um, when Shannon and I went on our very first cruise, right, we, we talked about going on a cruise for years. So when we would talk about the cruise, I mean, we were counting, first it was months, then it was weeks, then it was days, then we got on the cruise and we're having so much fun, we were counting down the days we were gonna have to go home to work and that cruise had so much emotion built into it, so much excitement. We were gonna get to go together without the kids, just her and I, it was gonna be like a, a honeymoon, even though it was years after we had been married. Um, but for us, it was gonna be just a great time together. 
We got to go down the panhandle, got to go into another country. For me, it was the very first time to step on the ground in another country other than Canada. And I have been in Canada, but down uh, outside of Canada, which I've been a number of times, but another country down south, that was so cool. Um, saw some landmarks I'd never seen before, got to go on a cruise ship. Um, it was just a blast. There were so many emotional things attached to it. that, And the more we talked about it, the more the plan became apparent, then it became available. Then we we purchased the plane tickets. We purchased the, the, the cruise ship tickets. We made our plans. We picked our events that we were going to do on the cruise, our shore excursions. We talked about what I was going to do on the ship and what she was going to do on the ship, what we we're going to do together. All kinds of emotion was attached to that. So affirmations affirm your present and your future. You can't really do much about your past, but try to process those emotions. Like I lost a family member this year. I've seen some loss. Other than that, this year, I have close friends that have gone through major health issues. I have family members right now going through health issues. And I can focus on those things, but I also um, can write affirmations about the time I want to spend with them. I can attach emotional feelings to it. Like, let's say I want to spend more time with my mother-in-law now because my father-in-law is gone. And so I told Shannon, I go, what, what, wouldn't it be great um, to spend more time, just the three of us, now that we don't have to be home all the time taking care of my father-in-law? Not that I don't want him here, but the ability to create this new idea about the future and a tie good emotion to it has really helped us in our healing process. And so, again, having those goals, both present, future, and a tie in emotions to them and having affirmations that you can actually tell yourself not only what you have planned, but the emotion. If I looked at every live stream and post show and I didn't have positive thoughts of positive emotions, then I would never be here. I wouldn't do it. But because I even get excited about Rad So and I get excited to talk about creativity, to talk about photography with some of you, then it it has emotion attached to it, and it makes it something I want to do. And the interesting thing about these affirmations with emotions attached, they help you get to your future. If your future is to be financially independent, if you tie enough plans and emotions to it, and you set goals with strong emotions, you get other people to set those plans with you and understand your plans uh, and the emotions attached to it. They'll find themselves helping you. If you have strong emotions and you know how to articulate that and you invite other people along the journey, all those studios, other people help me build them. I know people actually purchased things for me and brought me gifts for my studio. And so we got every one of those built because they had strong emotions. Even this studio started with a conversation with my wife. The man cave that was in here before that started with a conversation with myself and with my father-in-law and my son-in-law. And we literally made this a place to watch football and hang out and watch movies, my boys. It was a blast creating the idea and then creating the space. So your creative mindset is influenced by affirming your present passions and your future ideas and your future's goals. And goals without strong passion attached to them are really hard getting you there. But if you tie motion to it, you'll get there. Now, negative emotion does the same thing. If you go, I don't ever want to go to a dentist again, it hurts so bad. Guess what? That affirmation with negative emotions will actually keep you from wanting to ever go to the dentist. And you may put off appointments and you never know what the results will be. So sometimes, guys, there's both the negative side and the positive side, the yin and yang to affirmations and how you speak to yourself. They call it self-talk. They call it self-affirming. Sometimes your friends will remind you of your goals. Hey, we said we're going to run this marathon and not stop regardless of how long it takes. And they encourage you. They cheer you on. And that's a really important part of your creative mindset. So the last thing that I want to say about your creative mindset and this creativity that I'm talking about applies to everything. It's 
skills, right? Increasing your skill set. There's something about trying to use a HyperDeck shuttle the very first time or hooking a Rodecaster Pro up for the very first time. We all heard the phrase, practice makes perfect. I don't know that practicing is really a fun term for me. I don't even like to use it. I don't make affirmations about, hey, I'm going to practice with Ratso. I set goals that Ratso and I are going to be live Tuesday night, July 5th. I begin to back up from that commitment, hopefully days and weeks in the back. And I start thinking about what could Ratso and I talk about. It's always changing. And then I probably try to attach three or four positive emotions to that. So then I need to get Ratso out and occasionally work with him, practice looking at him and not just at the camera because I spend so much time in my live streams looking at the camera, looking at my confidence monitor that when I get Ratso out, I have to then, and I use the practice word, I use the P word, I apologize. I need to get Ratso out and look at him instead of at the monitor and that is part of the preparation to have it be really more impactful and powerful when I'm actually live in front of people. And so practicing making perfect, I like to just say that you want to get those things out. You want to work with them. It's why I don't do videos on products right away. I like to dive in to those products. That's true with painting. That's true with my photography. I like to go out and practice and shoot pictures just for my own enjoyment. Like a lot of these pictures that you see in the still image, I have thousands and thousands of pictures because I truly love um, just shooting photography and spending time with a camera and capturing those moments. Um, and then I like little things on my shelf that remind me of memories like I said, I grew up with Batman and Robin, so sometimes there's tangible things. Like in birthing, they actually tell women when they're going through transition into pushing, I'm sorry I'm talking about childbirth here, that they'll ask the, the woman to focus on a place in the room, and the atmosphere of the room can be changed. You can lower the lights. And they'll look at a picture and they'll focus on it. Sometimes just having Batman and Robin in the studio um, remind me that I can beat the bad guy and the Batmobile, Indiana Jones, um, again, um, Boba Fett from Star Wars, just great memories. And so sometimes surrounding yourself with objects that help um, your creative mind, they get you thinking then um, positively it's important. So not only the affirmations about your future, attaching emotions to it, but guys, it's really about that creative energy that you can create even visually around you. And I, I'm going to change up this room again because I don't want it to get stale. I want to keep the creative juices happening here. I don't want to just add more lights. I want to add more creativity in this room um, as time goes on. Did you just untie my shoe? Uh, yeah. Ratso? You didn't tie them together, did you? Oh, my goodness. I'll have to check those before we get off the air here. My favorite memory is being on the field at Ohio State for the OSU MI Michigan game when it went into double overtime. Great memory. See? And who were you with? And do you still get a chance to talk with those people and hang out with those people? Those things create creative energy. Then there's your unfavorite memories. So um, creating memories like tonight that Ratso isn't real. Well, he is real because I animate him. He comes to life. So for that moment, Ratso is real. And when I bring him into the live stream, either on camera, off camera, Ratso can become real. And maybe that is one of the things that I like about ventriloquism is that I can have a conversation with myself 
without someone thinking I'm completely, totally losing my mind. And we all do that, right? We're working on a project and we're talking out loud to ourselves. Hey, don't forget, you need to grab that tape measure, Keith, because Freddie's going to ask you how far away your lens is. I mean, sometimes I'm talking to myself, but it would be so much better if Ratso reminded me, hey, don't forget, Keith. So again, he's alive for that time, regardless of what anybody thinks, um, or you wouldn't invite him or look forward to him being here. So creativity has the ability to do things that are magical. From a chair you built to a moment like a football game. I mean, think about it. If those players didn't practice and do all the things that they did, if there wasn't all of those moments and if we didn't go to those events, we would miss those memories that actually help us gel together. And there are things that aren't fond memories. I'm not very fond of the moment that we got to say goodbye to my father-in-law in the house next door where the family gathered. I'm fond that we were together. I'm fond that we got to share that time together, that family came in from out of town, that we got to reconnect. We had a chance to go through that process of mourning together, but it's not a very fond memory, but the people and the family um, and my memories with my father-in-law sitting literally right here watching Seattle Seahawks football right on the other side of my PC. I saw that picture yesterday when I was going through photographs for the, tonight's live stream. So those are good memories that I have with my father-in-law. In fact, yesterday someone said to me, Dad would really love this movie when I was watching a movie last night after the fireworks at my son-in-law's house. So I should be a motivational speaker because I love to motivate people. And I had, over the years, because of the different careers I had, I did have opportunities to be in relationship with people and encourage them, train them, and motivate them. And I think we should be passing on the skill sets that we have. And if you look around your, your, your world, right, there are people that want to learn those skill sets. That's why this live stream works. That's why my channel works is because there's people wanting to learn and grow. And I love sharing um, what I'm learning. And I'm still learning. And if I went to Australia, I would learn some new techniques from a very good photographer. And I've had relationships with people here, learned about technology um, from Adam Tao. We've had a chance to talk. Tony and I have had a chance to talk. Many of you guys have helped me as well, so you should all be motivational speakers as well. Thank you, Freddie. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Um, not sure about all those other shows that I did in the post show, but guys, listen, the live stream is about live streaming tech. The post show is an opportunity to talk about some of the things around live streaming or video production or photography. I would love to be able to take a camera with me and do more about photography um, because I am passionate about it. Some of my favorite photographs as I go through them are of landscape, but I also love my people shots. You can see how many people shots are in this shot tonight. Um, I guess if it was up there, <laughs> you would see the shot from tonight. But yeah, these... Um, these photographs make a difference and they do help encourage me. And I can remember Ratso when he first got um, on stage. That shot is on the first performance stage that you see right there. Um, so incredible moments that, that are in these pictures. So even tonight, I like this still image better than the other still image. Um, that we had for the live show, which is right there. Now, I love the Batman and Robin shot, and I love those tools, but those tools without creativity and those tools without people, it's just not the same. There's so many more emotions in these shots, and especially in the shots that there's people or places that I remember. And in this shot on the top left, I'm looking out at a, um, I think actually this shot, it's my son, um, in there playing a lead part. And in the picture on the right with Quinnell and uh, Hooked on a Feeling, I'm out there with three of my close associates that we are working together in the studio. And then uh, a great cinematographer 
Um, and so I just had a great time, and I got a chance to borrow a Mustang. So anyway, those are great memories and great moments, and I'm glad, um, Freddie, that you've enjoyed tonight's show. So, you know, it's the little things, guys, um, <laughs> like this shot today. Um, I left Ratso in the chair all day today just chilling and so every time I had the camera on or turned around, Ratso's just chilling here in the studio. Um, and then right before the live stream, um, Ratso moved to under the desk and, um, so I could reach him during the live show. So I love these moments. I love that shot. And um, I love the emotions that these things create, even taking things like the HyperDeck shuttle out there on the fountain, building that fountain last year, sharing it with friends and family and people that come over. Guys, these are really, really, really cool things. And sharing with people about the Stream Deck and teaching people the Stream Deck, talking about audio and condenser microphones. I even have it here in the studio, you know, somewhere. I had it out. Where did I hide it? So those, those moments... Um, are important and um, these tools are important and i get to take this laptop with me um, and edit on it not a great shot it's not ready for prime time but again these things make memories these tools are for more than i don't know what's going on in this background here what is going on i have chat on the air no nope, not sure so We'll cut back to this camera. So for whatever it's worth, guys, I hope you will do um, something to help get those creative juices going. Um, I think it's important to have your creative mindset nurtured. I think if you don't nurture it, you can lose it. Your creativity can wane. And um, I believe that we were designed to be able to do something with these fingers and these hands and with our eyes with our ears, with our lips, with our mouths, um, and um, just the relationships that we have with people. I'm honored that you would be in these live streams with me. I'm honored that you share these moments with me. I'm honored when you learn something or you ask a question and I have an answer, and when you challenge me with a question that I need to go find the answer for. In fact, I got a comment today saying, go check out the new shuttle, HyperDeck shuttle update 8.11 on my new video I posted. So make sure you go check that out, like it, and share it. And again, as always, if you're just in the background listening, please consider subscribing and joining us in the chat each night. I would love to have you join me um, and chat together. So, okay, with that said, let's just see if there's anything else here. Um, I do use Adobe Lightroom um, all the time. Um, I love Lightroom when I'm out shooting photography for my clients and I want to load all those image in and then do some editing, some changes. Like if I'm outside shooting in the same light, I can make those adjustments to all the photographs. Lightroom is a great tool. It doesn't have the same power as Photoshop, but it does have lots of power built into it. It's a great organizing tool. Um, so yes, I do use um, Joe Lightroom. And TVJ, yeah, so doing production at that event um, is probably more than just a job. It's probably your passion, Jay, right? Um, if you're doing it and you've been doing it for a long time and you're as technical as you've become with what I saw on your channel, if you haven't gone over to see TVJ's channel, go see it. Um, if you haven't gone to David's channel or you haven't gone to um, these other people on the live stream tonight, please check out their channels and subscribe. Let's support this network of people and grow together. So, okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to ask me any question about creativity, the creative mind, mindsets, affirmations. If you have a specific communication question, a sales question, right, um, that you would like to ask tonight, let's take a few questions before we go. If you have one, um, I would love to do my best to answer those questions about ventriloquism, about Ratso, about the hyperdeck, um, about lighting, anything you would like to ask tonight. Um, 
Let's roll, and then we will wrap it up for another Tuesday, July 5th. Um, and thank you guys again for being on with me tonight. Um, and Ratso wants to say thank you as well for the super chat. So you need to untie my shoe before the show's over. Yeah, might be eating my laces. Any questions? I'm looking at the chat. If we're still live, it's dead silent right now. Um, and I think I'm streaming just a little bit delayed, a little bit of latency. But maybe you guys are all ready to go have dinner or go back to sleep. So, um, oh, here's one. Do I subscribe to any music services for a theme in the background. No, I do not. I know some of you would love me to subscribe to some free services um, because this has been so overplayed. Um, but it's also a signature track for my channel. I have been looking at, so to be honest with you, um, completely honest, I do have um, one subscription and I purchased licenses to tracks that I can use on YouTube. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of what it is right now. I'm racking my brain. You guys need to loan me some brain cells here because um, I always can't think of this name. They were just purchased by another streaming company. I'll have to put it in the chat later. I apologize, Hank. It's just not coming to me. I've been using the, that, that agency or that company for a bunch of years because I just don't have any problems when I use their tracks, either in a commercial, which you have to buy a more expensive license, or a regular social media video. I just have never had a single issue, a single flag or problem with it. So now I did produce that music video for Quinnell and Hooked on a Feeling was produced in my studio and I had rights in, in writing but later on, he signed a record deal, and they wanted to tell me that I had to take my video off of my channel, and I basically sent them an email back saying that, listen, I paid for the music video, so unless you want to pay for rights to the music video, which I own, um, and I produced out of my own money for Quinnell, then um, if you want to if you want to do that, then we can have a conversation about the rights to the to the video. Um, and the music that was produced in my studio. And um, so anyway, for whatever it's worth, um, I, um, I, I do download those tracks. I think it's like 49 to $50 for a track for social media and a couple hundred dollars for a track to have a license for like a TV commercial, FYI. So So if I went back to the younger self, would I change one thing? Yeah, I was a very selfish human when I was younger, Joe. What, what does that mean? When you're a young man, in my perspective, right, and some of the young men I've had a chance and privilege to both mentor and grow up with and around, it just seems like it takes a while for us to, to see that um, I'm, 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 I'm part of a pack, right? If I'm home, I have a pack of people. If I'm at work, I have a pack of people. And uh, a number of years back when my son was getting, my youngest son, Bryson, was getting very passionate about wolves, right? Um, we actually went to the zoo, and I have pictures of wolves. That's one of the shots I didn't put in the still image tonight. I almost did. Um, but they had wolves right there at the, at the at Seattle Zoo. And I, I think about how they run in a pack, and they hunt as a pack, and they protect each other. And... Um, they, um, they realize that they're part of a whole and they're not the focus. And so that's the first thing I would go back and change. And then the other thing that I would probably go back and change, right, is the, uh, the, the, the ability to communicate. Um, one of the things that I really struggled with in the first five years of my marriage with Shannon is that she's wired so differently from me that sometimes you have to learn to communicate or you have to learn the skill set to communicate. And we kind of had a hiccup in five years into our marriage, and a sage mentor of mine um, handed me a book. I actually recommended it to um, an acquaintance on LinkedIn today, 
Um, and um, that book was entitled More Communication Keys for Your Marriage. And then they had an original book for young couples getting married called Communication Keys for Your Marriage. And what really changed my life was just the basic communicating skill sets. I'd not taken any classes on communication. In high school, I took graphic design. I was in sports. I took shop. Um, all of these things I learned in high school, but I didn't learn anything really about communication skills, and there really is a skill set. So Shannon and I did that, communi more communication keys for your marriage book together, and it changed our marriage. We had some rules that we could apply now to communication, and um, so it was life-changing. So being less self focused, um, more selfless, and realizing that I'm a part of a pack of people that I can get more done together with people than I can apart. Um, and then also communication skills would be the first two things that I would go back and chat. And then there's people like this that have been stalking me around <laughs> for a long time um, and um, seem to be influenced by me on my channel as well as prior to channel. So I'll give you a shout out there. Um, never have been able to pronounce your name, but thank you for joining us tonight, a uh, longtime listener. So maybe Ratso is trying to tell you he wants to be the one to close the show. <laughs> hint, 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 hint. Um, wow, he's gone now. He must have climbed through that hole under my desk. Ratso, where'd you go? I'm in the kitchen. You're where? I'm in the kitchen. Oh, you're in the kitchen. Okay, well, sorry, Tony. I guess... Rats will have to come in the next post show. <laughs> so bad. No, I've not ever had a copyright strike on YouTube, but I have had um, some moments where they didn't want to give me the ability to advertise, and I hope I never have one. No, it wasn't artless. That's just by going in one of my hard drives here. Uh, let me look here real quick. Come on. Please stand by. I'm trying to answer this inquiring mind question. Let's see. Do I have that hard drive hooked up? Here we go. So nice. If I could figure this out. Yeah. I have copies of the files in there, but I don't have the documents in this hard drive. I don't have it hooked up tonight. And it has all of my licensing in it, but I will put it on the, the notes tonight. I apologize again. How do I determine the project and my hourly rate? So, um, it just kind of depends on the project if I'm doing it for like a commercial business um, or if I'm doing it for a private person. If I'm working with like a small business that's just started, um, I try to be as inexpensive an hour as possible um, and um, keep to an hour. So when I do my consulting, I contract with people for 90 days and there's a program where they can buy three hours, there's a program where they can buy six hours. If I do a whole day, um, I have a discounted rate for nonprofits, and I have a, uh, another rate for commercial businesses. And so it really depends on the project and what I'm doing there and how much I enjoy it. So um, the things I probably like the least, I'm most likely not to discount because I really would like to not do a lot of those type things. So um, I literally have done consulting here on the channel um, for right around $50 an hour, um, depending on the client and the circumstance and the situation. Um, and uh, because I get to sit right here, go into a Zoom call and do what we're doing right now, can have a, a drink here 
Um, I don't have to get on dress clothes. I'll just wear one of these shirts and ready to roll. A commercial job where I'm taking all of my equipment. I need to hire help. Um, it might be $1,200 for a full day shoot for a commercial. It just depends on it and may still charge them for music on top of that so that they have a license for the track that I'm doing for them. And that $1,200 for a day pays for some editing after that day as well. So it just depends on the project. I've done it for half that price for nonprofits. But again, I won't take all of my gear. A lot of what I'm doing right now for my client, I'm doing with my light chaser case on my iPhone. I have my lenses that attach to this. I have my new DJI mobile. That way I don't have to take out the expensive cameras unless I need some really, really good product shots or something like that. Or I'm taking some pictures and I want them high quality, then I might bring one of my high-end cameras. So I hope that helps you out. Quick thinking on your feet, buddy. He, literally, Tony, I'm, I'm telling you the honest truth, man. He climbed through a hole under my desk, or it's really dark in there, and I think he climbed under a hole under my desk. Nope, not music, bid, or Inventu. Um, I apologize. And again, I always have trouble remembering that site. It's the downsides. I need to write a stronger affirmation with emotion attached to it to remember that name because I have a hard time. I have to go up and open up folders. So I'm going to bring this up full screen. Um, because of your persistence, I'm going to try here one more time. I think in my travel drive, do I have... I'm just looking for a client... Um, that I have on my drive. See, I get these SSD drives. Um, they're all in my briefcase right now. Oh, here's one. This is a client's. I don't have a spare place to plug it without possibly losing the stream tonight, but on here is a client, and in here I have their documents. I just can't remember. Um, when I'm done with a the client, they get this drive. Um, it does not have my final edits on it, but it has all the original files. I give them the photography and all that stuff um, because I'm doing it for them. They get to own it, and um, I have rights from all of them to use those photographs in my, my studio, but they also get those files when they're gone, and I just keep some JPEGs. So I apologize for not remembering that. So about the farthest that I have traveled recently to do any projects um, has been all the way to north of Seattle. So about four and a half, five hours, no, not five hours, probably four and a half hours to Snohomish, Washington from Richland, Washington. So you can look that up on the map um, or I can just bring it up here and show it to you. So let's do Wash Richland. Um, there you go. So from Richland all the way up to north of Everett, Snohomish is about 30 minutes to the right. I don't know why. Um, I guess that is Snohomish if we zoom in here. So that's how far. Um, I have traveled uh, in recent months, and I went up there to do an install. Um, it is a church. I have a friend that's a pastor. I've known him for years. We did some camps together. Um, I've spoke for him in the past years ago, and because of that, he knew I was doing live streaming. In fact, I've got some work for him to do in the morning. He's a client of mine, and so I went up there to do an install for his church. So they have a Sony uh, A6400 and an Extreme um, uh, ATEM Mini Extreme, so it just records the program out, and actually uh, tomorrow I'm setting them up to do a bottom third PowerPoint 
um, every Sunday morning. They have been doing picture in picture with SuperSource, but they want to get SuperSource across the whole bottom. And um, so we're going to create that um, and show them how to do PowerPoint layouts for that as well. So again, that's kind of fun. Um, I think Epidemic Sound may have bought them, but that's not who it is. But you keep guessing. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's it, guys. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for those questions. I told you the post show is a is a show where you can ask me those questions. Um, and um, I will just say this. And nurture your creative mind. Feed it very well. It not only takes calories, but it takes use. The older we get, obviously... Um, the more difficult sometimes it is for us to remember. You just experienced that with me tonight. I experienced that, and I'm going to have to put in the notes tonight the answer to that question about the music company that I've been using. But with all that said, as the more you use it, the less you lose it. And obviously, there are diseases out there. There's things like Alzheimer's. There's things like dementia. And I think the more you use your brain and the more you feed it and the more you create creativity and you create strong emotions and you have affirmations and you do things with people, you create great memories, you are going to see um, better brain power, better creativity, a better attitude, just a better outlook on life altogether. And obviously your physical being has a lot to do that as well. And I've actually put on some stress weight because of the extra hours I've been working. And now I'm working to try to make sure I continue eating healthy. <laughs> no more hot dogs like yesterday. So for that, we will wrap this up. I am honored that you guys were in the live stream tonight. Um, my son is on. Hey, Christopher, it's great always to have you here. I was talking about the creative mind, and he knows all about playing in a band the studio, all the construction. So a shout out to Christopher for being here late on the live stream and um, talking about the creative mind and how to keep it going. And um, he has to deal with sales every day. Um, I'm dealing now with sales teams uh, three days a week. And so being creative and being rested and being ready to face your day could be the difference between a good paycheck and a not so good paycheck. So shout out to Christopher. Thank you, Tony, for that compliment on the great show. Great stream. Again, thank you so much. You're welcome, uh, Joe from Conjoling Technologies. Awesome show tonight. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, all of you, for being here tonight. And a hi from Freddie to my son, Christopher. Um, and um, Christopher, Freddie, and I have uh, become friends now after the live stream, and we uh, email back and forth almost daily, and um, he is also one of the people that motivates me creatively. Uh, Tony, as well, has sent me videos. Um, I've had a chance to um, to meet some of you guys, and I love that challenge. I love the creativity that you create, and I love even the push to have Ratso on the show, because I probably would never had Ratso out of the case if it wasn't for some of you guys. So thank you so much, DJ Ware. Thank you for being here as always, and check out his show. Highly technical, highly in inventive, highly creative as well. And um, you two have a great night, Freddie. So with that, we're going to use Son of, of Adam Tao's creativity, an app called Mix Effects. I'm going to push a macro button, which was created inside my ATEM Mini um, Extreme and my ATEM software. Um, it's going to roll a video that's going to play in my hyperdeck, that video was actually put together on Adobe Illustrator as a still image. The photographs, some of them were edited in Lightroom and Photoshop. They were all put together. That was brought into OBS. I used the music from my Rodecaster Pro. I used OBS and recorded it. I brought it into Adobe Premiere and put my flying logo in it and then rendered it in a Apple ProRes format from Adobe Premiere, all so that we could push a mix effect button, activate a macro, and we could say goodnight. So if that isn't creativity in the meeting of the minds, nothing is. So a shout out again to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for letting me talk about creativity once again here in the post show. Can't wait to be live with you again um, next Tuesday. And be live with you with the post show in two weeks. So until then, I am Keith. This is Life Journey Production Studios. Thank you. Be creative. Make great memories. Activate that creative brain and make sure.
that you are enjoying moments of creativity this week. And hopefully next week you'll share something that you did creative. I know I will be prepared to share that with you. So until then, I will see you in the next live stream and the next video. Don't forget to check out the new HyperDeck Shuttle teleprompter video here on the channel. Until then, have a great week. So you're back. Tony wanted to say hi. Okay, so hey, hi, Tony. Good boy.